Hello, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how I've added a home automation system to my house, on the cheap. If you do not know what I'm talking about, and to put it as simply as it gets, home automation focuses on centralizing and controlling all the main features of your home, this being lighting, temperature, security, multimedia, what you have in your fridge, whatever you can think of. The only issue is that these systems can become really expensive and they require a lot of infrastructure and maintenance, which is not at all feasible for the average home. A couple years ago, some Chinese brands started investing in making these systems affordable and easy to install. Xiaomi is one of these brands with their lines Mijia and Akara. I was curious about these products, but the idea of having to stick with your ecosystem is something that I was really not into. And then I found out about Home Assistant and I had to try it out. Home Assistant is an open source automation system that interfaces through a web page and the really awesome thing about it is that it can work on a Raspberry Pi. This is as small as you can get regarding infrastructure and integrates with a lot of sensors and actuators. My house is more or less shaped like this, it has two floors and a detached garage. My main goals were first to monitor the temperature and humidity in the rooms if possible to control the air conditioning units and also control some lights, especially in my kids' rooms so we don't have to wake them up when we are taking them at night. On the top of the garage, we have a couple of solar panels for the water heating system and I wanted to centralize the information that I can get from that system. The final integration was a backyard security camera and to top it all I wanted to control everything from a touch panel on the wall. And it had to be done cheap! Sounds impossible, right? Well, it's not. For the temperature and humidity sensors, I went with Xiaomi sensor which has Bluetooth integrated. The air conditioning units could be controlled by an infrared blaster, such as the Broadlink RM Mini 3. And the lights I've chosen were these Mijia bedside lamps, which can be controllable through Wi-Fi. The water heating system is an OEM version of the brand Rezol, which has a communication protocol called VBUS. I have a VBUS to LAN adapter, so I had a way to get the information. Then I got a cheap Wi-Fi camera from China for less than 20 euros, which may not last for a lifetime, but it has been working for several months without any flaw. I wanted the brains of the system in my office, which is on the ground level, but the wall panel had to have some kind of intelligence, as you are about to see. In my office, I have a Raspberry Pi 3 with HasIO installed. HasIO is really great since it's a complete operating system for the Raspberry Pi which doesn't require you to install an operating system with a lot of junk you won't need and that will eat away valuable CPU and RAM. For the wall panel, I needed a full operating system, so I went to a better machine. A Raspberry Pi 4 with 2 gigs of RAM, connected to an official Raspberry Pi 7-inch touchscreen. This Pi runs Raspbian, a version of Linux Debian for these small machines, and I've installed Home Assistant on top of it, as well as the Firefox browser. The way everything communicates is like this. The home assistant in the wall panel gathers the data from all the Bluetooth sensors, and this information is then gathered by the server in the office, as multiple home assistant installations can communicate easily between them. The wall panel Pi also runs a software that links to the VBUS module in the garage and retrieves all the variables from the solar heating system. All this information is also gathered by the server and the wall panel shows the server information in the Firefox browser in full screen, so all you see is a nicely designed interface touchscreen friendly. Now that the architecture is out of the way, let's get to building the wall panel. I've used 10mm MDF to build the whole thing and it's really a simple construction. Basically it's a rectangular frame which is secured to the wall with some wall anchors and it has a front panel that swivels with a couple of inches. The display case was then routed in the MDF for a flush mount and then I've epoxied the case to the panel. After adding some wood filler and doing a little bit of sanding, the case was seamlessly integrated. 
The MDF was then primed in paint white with the same polyurethane paint I've used before. And then came the time to install on a wall. I took advantage of having a control switch panel in the first floor hallway, so I did not have to run cables up the wall. I know my way around electrical installations, but please don't do this if you are not comfortable with electrical work, electricity is no joke and can get you killed. Also, there is a significant gap between the frame and the panel to allow for ventilation and I took additional measures so that the whole system does not heat up, such as switching off the LCD when it's not in use. After my lovely wife peeled away the protective plastic layer, it was done. Time for a quick demo on how this all works. The interface is dividing into pages, and this is the home which only displays a couple of diagnostic data. The second page concerns the ground floor information, and I've left this with some traffic information to me and my wife daily destinations, which SIO gets from Waze, and also the view from the backyard camera. Then comes the main page for the wall panel, which concerns the top floor. On the top left there are the controls for both my kids night lamps and these are fully customizable in color, intensity and even some light effects. On the right there's the temperature information of the three rooms. I have three sets of data which is the temperature, humidity and it feels like temperature. If you select one of the variables you can also see a graphic with the last hours of data. The next page is for the garage and it's mainly the water heating information. I can check all the temperatures for the wall panel, the tank, the state of the pump, if there is any errors, you name it. Then I have the lighting page which only shows the two smart lights that I currently have. And then I have a home temperature page. Here I can see the latest 48 hours and also some monthly graphics for the several sensors. The air conditioning page is not currently working as the RM Mini 3 has some issues, but I've kept it so I can add stuff in the future. Then there's the camera page which only shows my backyard camera and then I have a climate page. This is really cool because there is an integration for IPMA, the Portuguese Weather Institute and I can see the local predictions very easily. I've also added a windy.com integration which shows some nice maps, but I tend to focus more on the EPMOS predictions, as they use local tuned numerical models instead of the global ones used by these generic sites. The final page shows some network statistics and I can add a lot more information from my router and my NAS, but I really didn't need it and I prefer to keep it simpler. And here it is, how I've turned my house a little smarter on the cheap. I'm not gonna lie, I've dedicated a lot of hours into this. If you're not used to Linux, you're probably going to struggle a little bit. But the online documentation and the community on the forums and the Discord servers are really awesome. I can only say good things about them and thank them for their help, which I've needed to overcome some issues. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please consider liking and subscribing. Also, if you want me to go through some specific topics more in depth, let me know in the comment section below, as there is a lot that I did not cover. See you in the next video and take care out there!